Hello, International Women's Day Impact the Future Circle. Today, I am so excited. We are here in San Francisco, and I am connecting with Oyo Nizai, which is a new <laughs> word pronunciation for me. So please welcome her. She's a Google woman tech maker. She's coming all the way from Africa. Welcome and where, share with us exactly where you're joining us from. Yes, thank you so much, Alexis. And yes, you were correct about the name. <laughs> it is a new one for you, but you got it. You got it. It's pronounced for you, Nizai. Exactly. Practice, practice always makes perfect, you know, as with everything in life. So it's pronounced Oyo Nizai. And my last name is Andrewasian. So Oyo Nizai, Andrewasian. I'm African, like you rightly said, um, particularly from Nigeria. But today I'm joining you from South Florida. It's amazing. It's a wonderful weather. It's great. I don't know how it is for you in San Francisco, but my weather here is wonderful. I've been on a couple of teas today, some good food, and I'm really excited to get into this. Oh my gosh. Well, we're thrilled to have you. I'm really excited uh, to share with everybody the things that you've been doing. Uh, that is what caught my eye, seeing <laughs> and hearing, um, not just from posts of the upcoming events, but hearing it from other women tech makers and other <gasps> attendees. So I was like, you have got something going on here we need to share. Uh, you've got some good magic, some good juju <laughs> and going on, and we want to spread this around so it could inspire all of us in, in yes. things, things differently. So share with us a little bit um, right now, before we jump into the things you're doing, because we'll get mm -hmm. there. Tell mm -hmm. us about what drives you um, mm -hmm. and how it led to your current work. Like what is what are you really passionate about? Thank you so much. And yes, I'm excited to get into everything that I'm doing. We will discover that in the conversation. but really what drives my work is really uh, my origin. So I've always been in the IT field, always been in the IT industry. I started my career in an IT company where I supported 500, Fortune 500 companies um, who deliver services and products covering cybersecurity, encryption, data encryption, storage, all of these you know, technologies that at the time wasn't really prevalent people didn't really know about it so for us it was interesting and this is this was way back in Africa so I was motivated about it I've also worked in satellite communications so for me it's interesting to take this back to people yeah driving marketing initiatives for these companies in emerging markets and helping them to take their products to people that need it adding value on by the way my degree was in agriculture it had nothing to do with technology <laughs> and i know today or a couple of days now since we've been running a lot of programs we've had people say oh i started in this oh i started in psychology actually today i've heard a woman say she was in psychology but she had to do some computer stuff and now she's so interested in ai and machine learning so I've come to realize that it's not about what you do. Now we're open to doing, we have the option to do as many things that catch your interest. And while I very much still love agriculture, I was captivated by technology and the fact that it's able to meet needs. And that's usually what drives me in any company that I accept an offer. I make sure that I take an offer from a company that meets a need. This is the only thing that would keep me focusing on the mission of that company and would help me to fulfill business goals. And yeah. so this is really what drives me, the passion to meet the needs of a community. Yep. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is so inspiring to hear. And you're, we feel your your mission driven work. That that is something that obviously burns the the passion and burns bright in you, so that you can do your best work. And being able to meet the needs of the world, uh, local areas, individuals. I mean, that is that's such a big mission. I mean, you'll always have things to work on that you'll be passionate about. Exactly. And I, I, I exactly. applaud that. Yes, I, yes. I think with what you're saying with your background, thank you for sharing that because um, a lot of times we put ourselves into boxes and we think, oh, I, I can't 
be this or I'm not that or I'm and so hearing you find that hey you are always evolving you started in agriculture and studies and then you found your way into technology and it's a, you're all those things you know yep. you can so, be all of that for sure for sure that i do true. recall one of the things my parents were worried about for us they are baby boomers so they used to worry about job security for us but one of the things they now kind of relaxed about was to see that we were able to learn and unlearn and relearn quickly and so for them, we grew up to see them doing one kind of job. They work in the government, they come back. And so for us, we want to do more. If I have an interest in this, I want to be able to also DJ in the evening because I do have an interest in DJing, for example, or if I sing, I want to do both. I want to go learn, do my stuff about data science and also go back to learn uh, to sing in the evening, stuff like this. This kind of gives you the flexibility to have a balanced life and also to help with productivity, I believe. Oh my gosh, it is so awesome. I love all the layers you're sharing. I didn't know that about you. So it's always <laughs> fun getting to hear new things and layers and things that help you create that balance. And I mm -hmm. a thousand percent agree. One of the mm -hmm. biggest things right now is uh, with technology, mm -hmm. it's all about the unique experiences you bring mm -hmm. To those perspectives and we're going to get into that because um really showcasing a little bit about the work that you're doing <laughs> this might be a perfect segue into how do we bring these superpowers from our experiences <laughs> and connect it to what it is we're going to do next or even you know technology because really i think that's the secret spot is that everybody is finding a place for themselves in the yes. world of technology now that is true and so i did mention that i've worked across certain companies um offering internet connectivity safety security and just general development to a community i've also transitioned in different roles from marketing to data and products i've developed interest in you know research in um, business development and stuff like this but I took a break from corporate, full-time corporate responsibility for personal reasons. Mm -hmm. It's always important to be able to balance that and to know when you need that break and what you need it for and how long. Maybe you may not have the know on how long, but knowing when you need it and actually taking it. And so for me, I had to take it for personal, for personal reasons. And so during this time, I have been training to help make a decision on how to transition my career when I come out of this break. What career path do I want to move into? Even though I still love agriculture, it might be my retirement plan, but I'm not ready to go into that right now. What is it that I want to do? Having had this wealth of experience of over 12 years across these industries and these companies um, and these fields and, 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 and topics, what do I want to transition into? What is interesting to me now as seeing that I'm a very passionate person, I have to connect. And so I've recently developed interest in machine learning, AI, mm -hmm. um, data, and also honing my programming skills to become um, a front end engineer. And so this is, these are the things I'm busy with right now. Yeah. I've also had more time to write um, mm. across different topics, the technology as well. Um, I've also written about inclusion in the workplace and how to encourage women to get into the fields of STEM. This is something that was very difficult to even bring awareness about. Yeah. I know this. I just had an event where the lady said she was one out of five women in her class. It was it was that bad, <laughs> you know. So, and I do recall, and you are a web tech, a women tech uh, ambassador to the the research that was shared with us that they did in the UK. A lot of reasons why girls don't go in to study computer science. This is a problem and we need to resolve it. As much as we see ourselves on LinkedIn and we think we're a lot, we're not a lot. If you ask the younger generation, are you interested in coding? What would you like to do? Um, do you know anything about science? I think that the drive is not so high. The, there's still a limitation on mm -hmm. achieving this. So I'm busy now creating awareness on this. During this time of my break, work break, kind of create awareness on this and how I do this is to write about it 
I host events, monthly events on LinkedIn, as well as seeing that I'm a women tech network and um, a women tech makers um, an ambassador. I host workshops, I write, and also host events to create awareness on this and to just generally encourage STEM initiatives. Um, as a platinum facilitator for Hashtag and Remarkable, I have now carried over 600 workshops, facilitated over 660 wow. workshops, actually. <laughs> over 60 workshops, sorry. And to that over to 600 people, actually, here, <laughs> to 600 people. For no me, wonder I heard from people who were <laughs> raving about your workshop <laughs> and I am remarkable because you're yes. talking so many. Yes. You're doing it at such scale. Is yes. that globally? You yes, it you is globally. People online. from all over the world, countries that I've never been, I've never sometimes it. even like connected with anyone before. Reaching out to 600 plus people has been amazing for me in the last four years. I did not think when I started, I, that was not the intent. I just wanted to get the experience, the information out to people. Right. I believe that getting people to be confident, which is what the entire initiative is about, yeah. to challenge the societal con preconceptions and about self-confidence, about self-promoting, about sharing your achievements. I think that doing this is a stepping stone to correcting this you know, bias we hold against ourselves, the imposter syndrome and biases from the community. A lot of time when we do, when people have these biases about women getting into tech, it's because they do not know or are not aware of the benefits of doing this. Is it possible? Mm -hmm. They begin to wonder, no one, ha we've not seen anyone do this. And so um, creating awareness, having representation is super important. And so this is what I've been busy with right now. And... <laughs> It's a lot, but I, mean, I know I wanted to take a break from work, but now getting having the time to do my personal stuff yeah. gives me also fulfillment. Yes. It's an incredible journey and it's so inspiring, first of all, to hear you do this. <laughs> and I think you are obviously connecting and it's making the impact already felt. That's how we connected was hearing yeah. you know, all of these that are and that's word of mouth that's just peer-to-peer -peer, you know really exactly, exactly. all over the world yes. i've never met you in person and you're in and, you know so we're already connecting from different everywhere. places and i was in san francisco last year i yeah. didn't know i could have no. come to look for you next but time so, <laughs> next time yes it's so amazing you're right um this uh, last month the month of march we i had Nine, over 19 companies reach out wow. asking to carry out hashtag and remarkable workshops across different dates. So some I companies would that. have up to three or four dates. I'm still being booked into the month of July right now. People mix. have come to understand the importance of inclusion in the workplace and beyond yeah. the, the self-confidence that we need to have to talk about the things we've achieved. It helps you, one, for your personal well-being, two, yeah. to inspire other people, and three, yeah. for your career growth and progress. So, yep. Oh, my gosh. I just... I just wanted to like a moment of applause because really everybody, everything that you're saying really resonates um, with me uh, in, in what you're saying. My background is not technology and I came from French and economics and other degree background and also, you said you were a DJ, and I was also an ice I, I wasn't a DJ. Like, that's just an example. Like, if yeah. I wanted to do, but I did sing. Do. Yes, I did sing, actually, yes. um, in the you church sing. choir. I oh, my gosh. Like, okay, so you know, Don't ask me to sing right now, Alexis. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> that's okay. You're not warmed up. You're not warmed up. And, and, you know, I think what's really important, sharing your story, mm -hmm. um, is it opens up the door for what stem mm. and mm. avenues to be involved in tech mm -hmm. um that isn't necessarily what you might think it is or what it may look like you're you're representing that diversity you said representation so important and so mm -hmm. sharing your story is a huge part of that mm -hmm. but empowering others to realize their story has uh, merit is important mm -hmm. and because when i became an, a, a google woman ambassador i actually did not consider myself technical enough to apply 
to be an ambassador. And I say this because the Google Woman Tech Maker Ambassador applications are open now. And I remember exactly. if it wasn't for my husband oh, and co-founder who has the extremely big technical background telling me, no, you are get in there, fill out the application. And then when I was accepted, I realized meeting other women like you, hearing our different stories, our backgrounds, that no, we're actually a very important role in technology, which is creating these bridges. And, and yeah. what you're doing with I Remarkable to me is, is another bridge for all <laughs> those girls like us who maybe didn't realize this was an option for us or that we really have our, our skills are always evolving and changing. So yes. I thank yes. you because I was one of those people. <laughs> and that's why I want to pay it forward by making sure yes. we can exactly. get as many of our stories out there. I, I agree. And you're doing a phenomenal job. It is remarkable, Alexis. <laughs> oh, <laughs> full circle. Well, I'm excited because um, really what are, you know, you mentioned a lot of the skills mm -hmm. um, that you're developing and it's mm -hmm. confidence through the workshops. Mm -hmm. uh, so that people can really step into who they are and who they want to become. Mm -hmm. uh, what other skills do you think are really important for mm -hmm. helping get more girls and women and just equitable representation, you know, yeah. in tech? Yeah. What do you think yeah. are really important skills that we should be thinking about? Oh, definitely. So apart from self-promotion, being able to drive yourself, motivate yourself to do it. And we can teach you this when you join any Hashtag Unremarkable workshop. And I do recall, like I said, when I finished my degree and my elder sister, again, having allies like your husband, for me, my sister and friends all over saying, my elder sister said to me, hey, there's an opportunity I want you to come in you can do it and this was the opportunity this is how my marketing experience and my marketing career started oh. and i have to tell you alexis i was so scared i'm saying this first i'm talking about the soft skill first because no matter yeah. how much technical skill you have which i'm going to talk about as well it doesn't matter if you cannot put it out yeah if you do not have the confidence to put out whether it's the soft skill, whether it's the technical skill, it doesn't matter. He encouraged me. I already had the same feeling you had. I said, but I just finished school. I've never done this. This is a huge, yeah. you are a manager and you're leaving. At the time she was moving to the UK to do her master's. And she said, I recommended you for this position because I know that you can do it. She saw that it wasn't just that I couldn't, it wasn't that I couldn't do it. It was the fact that I didn't believe in myself. Wow. And so we do need to believe in ourselves and we do need to have those allies. And so that's the first thing I want to talk about. It is, it seems okay, not so relevant in the world of tech, but it's super important because beyond having mentors and sponsors, you need to be able to believe in yourself so that the person who is in the room can speak out your name. You do not want to get them embarrassed when they do speak your speak up your speak up your name and then you come in and you can't talk about the things that you can do. So for yeah. me it's that self-belief and confidence. And then yeah. I'm most excited about the use of technology to help in different yeah. fields now. So the different skills that we have seen, we can find it in, I'm going to talk about marketing. Yeah. I have seen a lot of marketing tools making life easy for me. In my all these years of working, I've come across that I was... There was a time I was data mining like manually. <laughs> wow. I took the first name, correct it, prepared the list, get it into the system, send an email, an email marketing campaign, and then physically go to an event, pick up business cards and start making them into Excel. <laughs> but over the years, I have seen tools that help us automate from the moment you start planning to the time wow. you send out the email to the time when people arrive at the event or the product launch to the time where i'm doing customer awareness or trying to get information when i'm trying to you know uh, have a product launched i'm trying to reach out to get customer requirements user stories all of these things have only been possible with tools that have been automated for me now we have agile project management tools that can help teamwork go work teamwork be very seamless 
And then we also have the use of technology giving access to healthcare. And for me, this is very important to be able to have improved technology. Yeah. I attended last year's Google I.O. event and it was so insightful. Two keynotes that really stood out for me was, and I really loved them, was the Responsible AI by James Mayinka, as well as how Google is bringing generative AI to Google search by Kathy Edwards. These two keynotes were just mesmerizing for me, taking yeah. a responsible approach to AI while developing, improving, and meeting the needs of people, researching to help make advances in scientific mm -hmm. fields is really uh, fascinating. And so we have all of these myths and different stories about AI, but Google is actively making that step. And I believe other companies are as well to make yeah. it responsible to achieve the goal and also meet the needs of people. I'm looking forward to Google 2024, Google IO 2024 to see what they would do. Hopefully I'm there. And yeah. uh, for me, just having those soft skills, be comfortable in yourself, be confident in yourself, and also acquiring tools to continue to improve the lives of people. This, this is an amazing, um, you know, for me, an amazing way of getting ahead of life. And this is so interesting because everything that you're saying and describing, it goes back to all your passion and your mission. Like it lines up. You, <laughs> you are just finding all these creative ways. And, you know, especially with all the tools you're mentioning to make things more effective, efficient, but the responsibility. And that really is important with yes, each of our responsibility, using mm -hmm. the tools, understanding tools um, mm -hmm. at the end of the day. You can use a hammer <laughs> to make a house and you can use a hammer to, you know, hit your hand with. And exactly. one hurts and the other one is very helpful. So yes. how you use the tool, that sense of responsibility is such an important message that you're speaking um, of. And it's something mm -hmm. that I think is where having more diverse voices becomes mm -hmm. critical. Because yes. how do we make sure tools are representing our backgrounds our you know future yeah. to make it yeah. better let's yeah. not repeat maybe mistakes that make people feel not True. included so True. that's very interesting you know with international women's day about exactly really, we need everybody's voice you, you know True. True. It, 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 so yes i agree with you totally people need it and i hearing you it's it's exciting to hear your vision of where the future is going and what's exciting you in technology well yes. one of the things that you um do effortlessly and that i admire is you are able to collaborate and really design a community um, mm -hmm. that has helped you thrive and succeed, no matter what industry mm -hmm. you were in, what you were doing. <laughs> you've, you've talked about having a really good group of mm -hmm. allies and that mm -hmm. sense of community. Can you share mm -hmm. why collaboration and community mm -hmm. plays such a vital role and continues mm -hmm. to in the work yes. that you're doing? Yes, thank you so much. And I think that the work that I'm doing, like you rightly said, um, I go to what drives me what motivates me and i put it together they're intertwined in whatever i do whether i'm speaking to you whether i'm speaking at another event whether i'm hosting an event carrying out a workshop my theme and my goal will always be the same thing and so to answer this question about collaboration and community is it, it is great to network like we did and then here we are yeah it helps with driving the message to speak on this i want to kind of read just very briefly highlight a discussion I had during my last LinkedIn event. Awesome. The speaker was a lady called Amir Kani Yang. She is a scientist, a data scientist. Our conversation underscored the ongoing need for continuous education, awareness and encouragement for women to pursue um, uh, careers in STEM, in the STEM field. Some of the reasons were these, and these are some of the key takeaways as well. One, the significance of representation, which I have speaked, uh, I've spoken about. Mm -hmm. As she navigated being one of five people in her class, and 
the limited visibility of women in STEM fields is crazy. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm speaking on this is she mentioned something when she got an admission to study computer science or what when she wanted to do that, she had questions being raised in the community in her circle. What is computer science? Do you want to work in a cyber cafe? A cyber mm -hmm. cafe for us back at home is a place where the one person who owns a lot of computers is then you go and pay time to go on the internet, maybe chat oh, with yeah. your boyfriend and stuff. So yeah. people started thinking she wanted to work in a cyber cafe, in a computer shop. What is wrong with you? Why would you spend this number of years only to end up in a shop? Oh my gosh, yes. Those were some of the questions. Okay, at least if you want to do anything about computer, why don't you do computer engineering? This is a little bit close to engineering. What is computer science? Who knows this? You're going yeah. to waste your brain. These were all questions that were asked. And I do not blame them because awareness was not raised. There was really no one. And even for her, she said she picked this cause because she just found that the women, the few women she knew were so online that did, uh, computer science were always looking like they had the good they've got their stuff together yeah and, <laughs> and she only thought about it as programming or web design that, wow that was it. see yeah that was it and so she couldn't even find like a passion for it even so so she transitioned and pivoted between that to something else to business and then eventually she found data science to be an intersection of all her passion all of it yeah. you know Awesome. And so for me, that was one of the key takeaways, visibility. Mm -hmm. So that collaboration and community helps us to be visible for people to see, yeah. oh, this exists. Alexis is doing this. I can do it too. And then there's something else we talked about, emphasizing knowledge and awareness to foster yeah. a supportive environment and challenge societal norms limiting women, which yeah. I have talked about then self-belief motivation inspiration having mentors and sponsors are pivotal in achieving success yeah. it's so important especially in the workplace it's so sad to walk into an office and see a lady uh women in that office but they do not have a nursing room for them and stuff like this yeah. when we do have mentors and sponsors in a high level they speak mm -hmm. for us people reach out people want to know more about us not just because oh um yeah we want to have the numbers added to the company <laughs> that we have x number of women it's more than that yeah that you care and you're doing this to mm -hmm. create a more collaborative community and just imagine a wealth of knowledge that would come from everyone if we were all fully represented and supporting each other and finally, she talked about the importance of supporting a supporting community, which is what we're saying now. Yeah. And so the role that it plays is enormous. I couldn't even start talking about it, completing it today. It's super important to have this community to speak on things. Yeah. And we don't know everything, to be honest. But no. Alexis can call me to order. Alexis can say, hey, Oyo. I noticed something you might want to correct that code you might want to do yeah, this and i'm very open exactly i'm very mm -hmm. open to to taking it in to saying oh thank you i didn't I, that skipped my mind or i'm super busy today alexis please can you handle my event for me i have to go i'm not feeling well or i have to go see a family member anything yeah. like this so just imagine having a good relationship, a good community. It fosters growth. I couldn't overemphasize the role of community and collaboration. I also think that a lot of the scientists that we have today, yes, some ideas may have come from them, but they collaborated to bring, to improve on that. And so no man is an island. We need to work together to have an inclusive, equitable, and a diverse workplace. Oh my gosh. And you know, you're absolutely right. It makes everyone's work more interesting, everyone's day more fun. Exactly. Uh, it's more creative. You know, yes, if you turn that into, oh wow, you have different superpowers than I do. And together, imagine what we could do. Or exactly. or maybe I can learn from your superpowers or discover superpowers I didn't even know I had. Exactly. And that comes from <laughs> us having these conversations. <laughs> it doesn't happen alone <laughs> yeah i do agree with you i love then, that yeah that's definitely the advantage and benefits of collaboration yep it's it's huge and mm -hmm. uh it keeps that continuous 
learning and growing mm-hmm. alive mm-hmm. in all of us. So finding yes. people who share that, um, mm-hmm. it's contagious. It's it's fun. <laughs> yes. And to give you an example, just the lady that I met at Google I.O. because she's a women tech maker, she is going to be speaking at my event this month of April. Even the lady that spoke in March, American, and the up this month, and you and I right now. Right now? That community brings that relationship, right? And I think there's nothing else that would bring so much, you know, creativity if not coming together. You know, I love that because I always say it's quality over quantity. You know, I'm less concerned with how many followers and likes I have. More, it means more when I have deeper connections more real human and the way we connected with very mission aligned things like this we're all a part of this circle we're growing this network of allies and featuring you and reinforcing that but also inspiring us to keep this going that it's a very important we have to uh as they say you have to continue to uh water the garden you know otherwise it's gonna dry up so we have to keep doing it well speaking of next steps and things before we let you go (laughs) um, what are some things that Mm -hmm. you would like to share with our audience that we could do uh that would help the work that you're working on right now The first thing I want to say before I get into my events, sending the links for you to join, which I will share with you, Alexis. But the goal that I have and the passion that I have to reach everyone, to change the world, to change the way people look at things. And I know that we cannot undo centuries of bias, right? But one step at a time would help. And Mm -hmm. so it starts with you, your mindset, changing it extending a hand of support and strength to others, like joining my event. (laughs) Think about it. What can I do to make the society better? What Mm -hmm. can I offer? It's not always about us. Mm -hmm. It can be what I can do from my small corner to help people. I don't have to be a scientist. I'm not an engineer, at least not yet. I'm not a doctor, Um, but in whatever field I'm in, whatever corner I'm in, I believe that I can add value to people from what I'm doing. I do recall a story. I'm a Christian, so I recall a story in the Bible where God asked Moses, what do you have in your hand? Uh And he said, a staff. It wasn't a staff list in gold. It wasn't a staff. It was just normal old stick or something. And God used that. So that and a willing heart is really what we should look forward to if you're looking to impact which is what we are talking about this you know from the month of march yeah inspiring you know impact and inspiring people i think it really starts with us and so being willing so if you can talk if you can write if you can create put that content out there if you can raise awareness amplify voices like alexis is doing now put it out there let people know let people see you um imagine if people didn't share tips or information during the pandemic oh my gosh <laughs> yeah where would we be where, where would we, would we, be? we be here <laughs> there's always something that you can contribute um oh. like alexis rightly said it it's not about numbers oh how many impressions how many people have read it and all of that did one person read it he didn't reach out to someone maybe not today maybe tomorrow mm-hmm. someone someone came to me and said oh i always like what you post on your status and i've never seen this person see my status it's one of those people that have you know like privacy you can see when they look at your status i was like oh i didn't even know you saw these things that i posted so yeah. For me, what I would say is changing the mindset and making society a little bit more uh, conducive for us all and be confident in yourself. And then you can start by joining my workshop, my upcoming events. I'll share the links with you. If you go to my well, LinkedIn profile, you will see my events and you would see um, the next event, which is on the 26th. Um, it's about resilience in entrepreneurship 
and awesome. it would be amazing. We are speaking with Talisa. She is a wealth of knowledge and author. She works. She is a speaker with the U.S. and the U.N. U.S. Um, one of the I don't recall right now, but she is just a wealth of knowledge and it would be great to have you join us. I also have upcoming workshops and that would be great for you to join as well to continue to learn more about self-confidence and how you can begin to share your achievements, yeah. record them and share them um, to personally personal achievements or professional achievements. It would be a great time. So I hope to see you there. Oh my gosh. Oh, yo, thank you so much. We are looking forward to all these things and I'm sure we'll have you back on because there's I so agree. many cool things that you're doing. And I want to recap a little bit because I feel mm -hmm. like there's a full circle pop moment here that we are experiencing because um, everything that you just shared that are action steps, I feel like coming back to your background in agriculture, you mm -hmm. are showing the seed that mm -hmm. needs to get planted, which is the confidence. Yes. It's yes. the I am remarkable workshop. Yes. Then yes. once you have that, you can now say, okay, what are my superpowers? Because I know what they are. Because a lot of people got really figure out what your superpowers are. Own true. it. And then you can share it with the world. So that now you're true. growing true. up. <laughs> the flower is is growing blooming and then, yes blooming, and then now you have something to help the the ecosystem the birds can come exactly come exactly you can pass on you your knowledge your wisdom your experience and you're that absolutely right no matter what stage you are there's this beautiful i'm just bringing it back to your agricultural experience exactly oh sure it really relates to owning and sharing and helping each other and we just exactly. need to do it continuously exactly. because then we'll nourish each other and everybody yeah, yeah. will be able to have that supportive uh ecosystem that is so and world. brilliant that is so brilliant and to add to your way of putting it together we <laughs> talked about collaboration when your plants and your fruit grows you find that it's attractive and people yeah. come to it it, it comes they to take you oh have you had alexis fruit it's so good yeah they yeah. give it to you it's and like then you give it to the next it. person oh the collaboration <laughs> is going your community is growing you see the networking is going so that's really yeah. it to be honest you put it all together you're amazing you're remarkable <laughs> oh thank you thank you you know i've done the workshop but you can all it's not just a one-time thing that's what oh, i no, love about no, no. it's all you going because we go yes. through different parts of our lives where we're beginners to remind it exactly Exactly. And if exactly. you're learning all the time, you're always should be a beginner. If you're getting too that comfortable, you know, that you is... might want to push yourself. I like more. that. You're learning all the time. You'll always be a beginner. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, y'all. Thank you so much for taking the time and sharing this with us today. We're going to make sure all the links are available so that everybody can connect with you, easily support what it is you're doing. Uh, but definitely, that. you know, we're keeping this going year round. We're trying to make yes, yes, this yes, impact. Yes impact the future just like your your consistency we're going to be here in the circle so we'll definitely have you back and help promote and share any way we can and again thank you, thank you for everything you're doing and just being of so such an awesome human being <laughs> <laughs> thank you you are as well alexis i appreciate you i want oh. to wish everyone a great women's history month happy international women's day whether we've we're still in the month of April. We're still celebrating. So I wish you all a great celebration. Don't forget to remember that you are remarkable. Thank you so much. Okay, we'll talk soon. Have a Bye -bye. wonderful rest of the week. So please join us in this revolutionary way for us to celebrate IWD together globally, acting as one, having a place that we acknowledge all of the efforts being made. And together we can attract greater allies, partnerships, and sponsors than we ever would have by ourselves. So please, it's not too late, but every day we are excited to be seeing new profiles being uploaded and shared out. Join us in this epic historic event on Skillville with the International Women's Day 2024. We look forward and are so grateful for all of the incredible humans who have made this possible.